Sur la fin de All right. Um, so, can everybody hear me? Yes. So, uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, taking ownership of your career. Uh, so, we're getting close to the end of the year. We all make all these different resolutions. And uh, the hope that I have at the end of this talk is that um, I can inspire you to come up with some resolutions for yourself and for your career. Um, yet, uh, this is kind of my experience so far of changing jobs in Berlin. Uh, which means that uh, this is my personal experience. I'm a product manager, but what I'm not is really an HR expert. Um, so if you have any kind of concrete questions about salary and that kind of stuff, I mean, I can give you my opinion, but um, I'm here to talk a little bit more about how to make that shift and how to kind of structure it in a, in a good way. So first of all, uh, remember that little scribble that we had on the screen before that showed uh, the careers being a little bit more chaotic nowadays? So guess what? That's also my case. So um, when I came to Berlin, I started uh, working for a big corporate. So I worked for Deutsche Telekom. Just to give you a bit of a scope, uh, this is a 200,000 people company. Um, then after that, I thought that's a little bit too big for my taste. Um, so then I went on to Axel Springer, which was kind of a hop. You know, this was a 16,000 people company. So it was kind of like, okay, this should be a little bit more manageable. Um, and after really realizing that, um, well, the big corporate companies were a bit too slow for me and the process was too bureaucratic, I kind of shifted a little bit and went into uh, Rocket Internet as the fourth hire of a, a new startup. Um, so it was definitely a drastic change. So it wasn't really just shifting, it was really, really drastic. Um, and when I saw that, that was a little bit um, not sustainable for me. So it was too chaotic, it was uh, too many um, kind of personal time invest and I decided to try kind of um, more mid-sized startups. So I, I went into N26 and currently uh, I'm working at Condemnful. So if you see uh, the different paths that I've taken are kind of trying to find what is the right fit. And what I want to kind of talk to you about is how you can do that in a structured way. So the interesting thing is, uh, even though this seems like it's a millennial thing and that everybody's changing, you know, we're not alone. Um, so this is a statistic from the Bureau of um, Labor uh, Statistics in the US. Um, so on average, um, a person will change jobs about 10 to 15 times in their lifetime, uh, which again, to our parents sounds totally crazy, but for us, this is the norm, right? Um, and on average, every, every employee actually spends about four years on, on their job. So uh, knowing now that it's okay to change, uh, what we're gonna start uh, talking about is uh, understanding if it's the right time for you to change. Uh, then we're gonna talk a little bit about what is the right type of company that you can kind of deliver the best value and strive at the uh, kind of delivering the, the best self uh, from your side. And finally, um, talking about uh, what is the right job fit and how to find that. So first let's start with understanding if it's time to change. So the first suggestion, as it was uh, stated before, is trying to do that introspection and that type of understanding if, uh, if you're currently uh, not happy with your job. So first trying to understand, do you have room to grow? So in different startups, then you might have this possibility to kind of do whatever you, uh, you're best at or whatever interests you, uh, but in different companies, it might not be the case that you can grow because there's no different positions that you can grow to or uh, kind of no, no additional budget to create positions. So this is something to consider. Um, is your current job challenging? And I think this is a really interesting one just to think through when was the last time you learned something or you did something differently? Um, this is something I, I ask myself a lot just to try to understand, you know, is this already boring for me? Is this something that is challenging me? Um, and then lastly, uh, do you enjoy what you're doing? I think this is a pretty interesting uh, exercise to do in the morning. Uh, if you wake up in the morning and you feel like, you know, you are either really excited to go into work and see your coworkers or you're actually kind of dreading it and uh, kind of not feeling really inspired, then that's something uh, to think about changing, right? So let's say that you do want to change. Hopefully that's the case because you're all here. Um, so there's uh, three main things um, that you can decide to change. So there's the position. So you're working in finance and you want to work in legal department. Um, there's the industry. 
Uh, and then finally, the geography slash job um, or market. So to understand this a little bit better, I'm going to give you an example. So we're going to walk through the case of Mark. So Mark is currently an accountant, and he works at the Finanzamt. And uh, he has lived in Germany his whole life. But Mark actually does a, has a blog on the site uh, about finance topics. And he loves writing so much that he wants to make that into a career. Um, so Mark decides that he wants to become a marketing manager. He wants to do that uh, at Spotify. And he wants to move to Singapore to do this, because why not? Um, the challenge here is you as a hiring manager looking at this profile, it would be really hard to give him a try, right? Um, it would be, uh, now I'm not, I'm not saying that it's completely impossible. I think uh, if Mark happened to have a music blog and he traveled through Asia for a full year, maybe he could have kind of a story to tell. Um, but otherwise, if you don't have that story, I think it's a, a bit more advisable to think about what are, what is the one thing that you can change in maximum two, but all three at the same time is really hard to make that shift. All right, so by now we should be able to know, do we want to change? If so, what do we want to change? So let's say that we want to change companies. So what would that look like? So I'm going to talk today about kind of the characteristics of three types of companies. So um, it's really hard to actually give labels and clear definitions to all these three, so bear with me. Um, so for startups, I'm going to kind of refer to companies that are one to 100 people. For mid-stage ones, I'm going to talk with about companies that are around the hundreds. And for corps, they're the ones that are kind of 1,000 people plus. So in these three different types of companies, I see kind of the three main uh, differences being the speed of execution, um, the stability of the company, and then finally the potential for you to grow as an employee. And ultimately, so I'll walk you through these for each one of the three uh, types of companies, and ultimately we'll talk about what are the skills that you need to actually thrive in this type of company. So first, startups. So we've talked a lot about these, but basically we're saying um, they have a very flat hierarchy, which means you get to decide what your role is, you get to change. If you're doing marketing today, you could be doing sales tomorrow. There's a lot of um, autonomy, uh, which means you, you can kind of create your own path. Um, and you can have a lot of impact, right? Uh, the things that you ship one day can have a huge impact on revenue or the company growth. Um, in terms of stability, uh, it's kind of the opposite of this word. Right? So you have a lot of chaos, you have uh, constant change, you might ship uh, an AB experiment and learn something completely new and completely shift the company strategy. Um, so in terms of stability, it's kind of challenging. Um, and then that comes at uh, the benefit of being able to actually have a lot of um, opportunity to iterate, um, which means that in terms of speed of execution, then it's just really fast, right? Like you can sit together with your, your developer, come up with an idea and ship it within hours. So in terms of skills, as you can imagine, it's if you're a person that thrives um, in uncertainty and doesn't really mind that, then that's actually something really positive and this may be a good fit for you. Um, if you're kind of the, the don't mind the, the fact that your role would change and you're actually excited about that, um, that sounds like a, a really good fit for, for you. So for mid-sized uh, companies, and here again I'm talking about like companies with a, a couple hundred people, uh, in terms of your personal growth, you'll see that things will start to standardize a bit. So that means that maybe your middle management layer is uh, starting to, to get created, and maybe there's an opportunity to, for you to actually go into these roles. So that might be interesting. They're probably looking for kind of uh, specialists. So you, if you're a marketing specialist, this is maybe a, a good chance for you to kind of go in there. Um, and in terms of stability, it's kind of a little bit more balanced, right? So it's not these big strategic shifts, but it's more intentional piv pivots, what you'll see. So um, you'll probably not completely sh change your target market, but you'll focus on a subset of those. Um, and in terms of speed of execution, this can maybe become a little bit slower, mainly because you have more people, more coordination, and so on. Uh, so here, I think the most interesting uh, skills uh, for you to know if you can thrive in this type of company are uh, focus and attention to detail. So again, this is all about execution. So it's all about making sure um, that you pick the right um, things to work on and when you do uh, execute flawlessly. 
Um, and then, um, actually, it, it's a very important skill if you're um, good at building processes or if processes are something that's interesting to you, um, because this is the the stage of company um, of a company in which, um, like, this is complete chaos, and here you're trying to find a little bit of order and uh, create these processes. Now to the corporations. I don't want to give them a bad name, so I'm going to try and be fair, um, even though they're not for me. Um, I think in terms of personal growth, you can definitely find that it's a little bit more hierarchical, but um, that also means that you have a very linear career path. So if you want to do marketing your whole life, you know, forever and ever, and you want to just like add a senior and director and a VP uh, title on top of your current title, that's maybe a good option for you. Um, in terms of stability, I mean, it's really constant. You're always going to get your paycheck, right? Like, it's really highly unlikely that they'll go under. Um, but the price of that is uh, actually here. So um, what you'll see is you your projects will be a little bit longer because it's no longer about um, kind of the focus on the impact, but slightly more, more about the relationship and how do you make sure that you don't step on people's toes and how do we make sure that, um, I don't know, 10 departments across 10 different countries actually agree with your strategy and things like that. Um, so if your core skills are around persuasion and um, having influence of it over others, I think this is actually a very good fit. Um, so this is just something to, to consider. But if you're joining a startup, um, this is just a quick list of uh, fact checking that I suggest everybody to do. I think it's really easy to kind of get really excited about the company and just like dive in. Um, but these are just like three, three core things that I like to look at before I join a startup. And that's um, understanding if they have uh, VC money. Um, so VCs, like their sole job is finding good companies to invest in. So this is a good indicator. It's not the whole thing, but it's a good indicator. Um, secondly, do you believe in the vision? Right? So especially if you're going into a startup, you're probably going to spend a lot of time with these people. You're going to spend a lot of time looking at that product. Um, so you better really believe that that problem that you're solving is interesting and that the solution that this company is providing is actually something you, you back up. Um, and finally, uh, this is more kind of external views and you know, kind of belief-based. But ultimately, when you sit down and talk to them, make sure that you kind of understand a little bit of how the business is doing. If it's, a, for example, a social network, maybe you want to look at um, their user growth, uh, which is a really good indicator. So depending on the, the type of company, you'll, you'll want to look at um, at least one number, internal number that tells you, you know, they're gro growing really fast or um, being able to monetize uh, quickly. All right, so by now, uh, we should have a good gut feel of which type of company we want to go into. Um, and if we're trying to do a, a job switch, um, basically I would recommend starting by these three things. So the first one is understanding uh, what the job is, right? So this sounds really simple, but you would be surprised of how different the same job title is across different companies. So even if you're changing, so I'm a product manager, let's say that I change um, from being a product manager at, at a finance company to a developer company. That's a very different um, set of requirements that they have. And they'll probably, uh, in the finance company, maybe you need to have a bit more knowledge about legal, which is not necessarily a core skill that you need to have in a different type of country, company or industry. So this is just something for you to understand, OK, what is the job about? Um, secondly, kind of do a gap analysis, right? So um, when you look at all these skills, what is it that you're lacking? And if there's something that's really important for the job that you're lacking, then just go for it. Um, there's a ton of uh, different learning uh, platforms online. There's meetups that you can attend. Um, so I think that's, that it's totally possible for you to make that shift if that hard skill is not there. Um, and finally, find a mentor. I think uh, it was mentioned before as well. Uh, I think it's one of the most I think rewarding parts of this process because this mentor will help you kind of visualize yourself in that position and see, help you understand if you are actually a good fit. So they'll probably tell you kind of what is what does their day in the life look like, right? Or what are the biggest challenges that they have? What do they wish they knew uh, before they joined or they, they came into this position? So this is a, a really good way for you to understand, you know, is this something that I see myself in? Or if it's something that, uh, you know, sounds good on paper, but it's not really me. 
now, um, this is a tool I, I want to share with you guys, a tool that I, uh, it came out of need. So when I was looking for a job about uh, two years ago, um, I was talking to a bunch of companies and trying to understand, okay, which job offer should I take and so on. Um, and I felt like the whole process was so visceral, right? Like I, was, I would have a great conversation with somebody and then I would have a great conversation with somebody else. And I was just like, okay, which one should I pick? Um, so going a little bit further than a pro and con list, um, I decided to kind of put, uh, put all the different offers in a, in a model. So I started by um, listing out the criteria um, that I have for what is important for me in a job. Um, I assigned some weights to it. So we were talking before about how at the beginning salary shouldn't be that important. So maybe this is a, a model that fits for somebody who's uh, starting in their career or making a really big shift. So for them, the growth opportunities are really important, but then the salary is not that important. Um, but then you want to make sure you get your paycheck. So maybe company funding is, is quite important for you. So let's say that I talked to Startup.io, which is a very small startup. And then I talked to a uh, corp company. So probably at Startup.io, uh, my growth opportunities will be way bigger um, versus at uh, corp co, right? Uh, probably be stuck at this job for 10 years. Um, and at Startup.io, maybe the salary is not that great. Um, as it would be in the big corporate. And finally, in terms of funding, I mean, th definitely this company would be much more um, volatile than this one. Um, and this is much more stable. But, you know, like this is just me trying to give uh, points to each one of these interviews and these aspects. Um, so if you were to sum these up, you would actually get a 24 corp and an 18 for startup IO. So that might lead you to believe like, well, I should take the corp job, right? But this is why... Uh, the weight is quite important here because if you actually do the weighted average um, for each one of these scores, you would see that because the growth op opportunities are kind of your main area of focus, you'll see that that half has a bigger impact on the score. Um, so then maybe you want to take the startup job and it's a, a good way to, to think about it. Um, now, this model comes with some tips and some asterisks. Um, the first one is just make sure that you're honest with yourself. If you have two mortgages and uh, some debt for your master's degree and everything else, then, I mean, salary is probably very important to you. So just make sure that those weights represent really what's important to, for you at that point in time. Um, secondly, recalibrate often. What I've seen is that every time I look for a job, it's, it's always something that's driving me there and then it kind of assigns a different value for each one of the, the items. So at the beginning, maybe salary is not that important um, because I'm a student and, you know, I don't need to cook, it's fine. Um, but then afterwards, then I, I want to have kind of a better salary progression. Um, and finally, it's just not a magic pill. So just because the model tells me I should hire, uh, kind of get the startup job doesn't mean I should actually just take it blindly and take that job, right? Um, there's a lot to be said about that gut feeling and kind of that um, interaction that you have with the people you meet. Uh, so make sure that uh, you don't just blindly trust the model, but uh, take into consideration, um, take it into consideration as a um, kind of objective view on the different offers. So just to recap, um, we talked about uh, starting with understanding if you want to change or not. Um, then thinking about out of that tr triangle, what are the things that you want to change? So is it the job? Is it only, um, is it the location? So you want to move from Berlin to Singapore. Um, secondly, um, you want to start looking at what is the right type of company that matches the kind of skills that you have. Um, and then kind of fact checked, fact check to make sure that, uh, you know, you're not going to join the company and it goes under in two weeks. Um, and finally, uh, try to think about the job fit um, to understand what it's about, if it's a good fit for your skills, and ultimately maybe even use that model to uh, think about uh, what is the right choice for you in a more kind of objective way. And I want to leave you guys with this quote. Um, so this is a quote from Helen Russell. She's the head of people at uh, Atlassian, which is a company that does Jira. 
And um, she basically saying in this quote that uh, in 2019 absolutely remains a candidate's market. What this means is this is a buyer's market. So there's much more offers out there than there is people applying for jobs. So this is a great opportunity for you guys to think through what is the right fit. Um, so make sure that you invest the time in doing that introspection and kind of doing your research so you can find um, the one that fits the best. And that's it for today. Thank you. Also, if you'd like some additional reading, I highly recommend both of these books, which are kind of like workbooks to think through it. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? You can also ask things that maybe we didn't uh, discuss, but do you have it in mind? Uh, you, sp oh, is on? Ah. Yeah. you spoke about uh, mentoring. Yeah. Um, maybe you can recommend a good place or way to find a mentor, maybe also talk a bit about what you got out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm also interested in the other side of things. Uh, so becoming a mentor, mm -hmm. uh, maybe especially if I want to take on more of a leadership role, yep. uh, how this could help me maybe. Absolutely. Um, so in terms of finding a mentor, there's a lot of different um, networks out there. Um, they're mostly focused on startups, um, so they try to help mentor people that work in startups. Um, I know, for example, one that's getting started in January, it's called Jolt, um, and you can decide to join it. And the cool thing about this one is that it's a, actually a two-way mentorship program, so you can mentor somebody and then you can also choose a mentor out of the pool. Um, so I think it's quite a, an, a nice system. Um, but ul ultimately, I'm a big fan of just like stalking people on LinkedIn. Um, so I'll just like look for product growth or head of growth or something like this uh, on LinkedIn and just actually see if we have somebody in common. And if not, I'll pay for the recruiter's free trial for a month and, you know, kind of reach out to a bunch of people that are on my list and then see what happens. So um, I, I also really recommend just going to events. I feel like um, very... Um, or let's say theme specific events uh, so like a product management meetup it's a, that's something that's interesting for you or like a Ruby meetup or something like this um, so you can find like minded people and that might be actually a, a very kind of natural way to, to go about it and the other part of your question sorry okay I Great. just want to add because we had this conversation so many times hmm. you have the thing is that so many people on higher positions actually feel really good about giving advice back, but people tend to feel intimidated to contact them in first hand, so they really don't get that many people that ask them to be mentors. So uh, they really are happy when people reach out, which is really interesting, and I think people should know that more, and uh, you can even cold mail them. It's not so difficult to guess their email. Yeah, and, and I think uh, one interesting thing that I would add is I was reading about this uh, recently, and one recommendation is also to think about finding multiple mentors. Um, so, for example, if I want to work on my blog next year and also shift into uh, becoming a programmer, but also, I don't know, be, do that as a consultant, then maybe it makes sense for me to get a mentor who is a successful consultant, somebody who's a great developer, and somebody who's uh, maybe a marketing specialist that can help me with my writing. Um, so that might also be kind of a, a way for you to um, not put all your eggs in one basket, but actually think about what are the skills that you want to kind of gain or how, how you want to evolve your uh, your skill set and then find the right people for those. Hi, Hi. thanks for the presentation. It was very nice first. Um, how would you recommend some for some people to shift from certain types of roles or that they had? I mean, for instance, I'm in sales and I would like mm -hmm. eventually to move to product or eventually to move to marketing. I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. The thing is that when you start to look go for a job search is that you realize that most of the time and especially I mean in Germany and for some companies, Many in many times you've got, of course, some requirements to fulfill uh, regarding experience. Let's say that I'm filling the gap with the, uh, regarding my skills, mm -hmm. so that I'm learning and everything. Yep. But then I'm coming to you and I'm telling basically, okay, here is my resume, and I would like to join your team. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any experience in this field, but I'm really super eager to learn everything. So, how would you recommend me to basically move? 
from sales market as marketing mm -hmm. to product eventually? That's a great question. Um, so in that case, I would definitely recommend uh, going back to that triangle. So um, maybe it's a, an easier sell for you um, to start looking at what are product positions in the current industry in which you work at in Germany. Um, so it's a bit easier for you to kind of make such a natural shift than it is to move to Singapore and become a marketing manager. So that would be the first thing. Um, and then the second recommendation I would have is just um, get a bit closer. I don't know if you have a product team in your current company. Um, no, okay. So maybe actually that's an interesting opportunity for you to, uh, as we were saying before, test, 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 right? So just talk to, maybe it's a smaller company and you can talk directly to the founder or whomever is in charge of product. I'm sure there's someone. Um, just talk to them and see, okay, what is the thing that you don't have time for? Um, what is a small project that I can help you with on the side? Um, of course, making sure that you still pay attention to your core job, but uh, what is a small uh, project that you can take on the side um, to kind of prove those skills, right? And this is something, an experience that you can kind of bring into the next uh, job interview and talk about, right? Say, you know, not only do I have the skills, but I also tried it out in this specific situation and this is why I learned. All right, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Good luck on the lead.